How much information can a temple preparation instructor really teach? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining with us. And today we have Josh Hatch, who's been willing to come and share his story. Yeah, I've been so excited, Earl. Thanks for having me. And as you can tell, Brother Hatch has a beautiful voice. <laughs> and you've done some radio, is that true? I have, yep. I've yeah. done a couple years of radio. I kind of like my current job a little bit better. Do you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, beautiful voice, and I've, I've got this. So uh, anyway. We don't, no, it's knows. great. Yeah. So where are you from, Josh? I'm from Salt born? Lake City. Yep. Oh, yeah? Born and born? raised here. Yeah, where'd you go to school? I went to Cypress High. Oh, okay. All right. And born into a... LDS family, were you? Born in the Covenant, very as they say? LDS, yep. Really? Born, into, born into the Covenant, yep. Um, really? I'm, in fact, I'm the first one that I'm aware of to have left the LDS faith since the time of the pioneers. Wow, you were mentioning so. some names before. Uh, who, who, who are you related to? Yeah, so I'm related to uh, George Q. Cannon is oh, one, of the, common, one of the main right? ones that yeah. I'm related to. Yeah. And several others all the way up to uh, Brigham Young. And they were polygamous. They were. Yep. Yeah. I come from polygamous stock. Isn't that funny how we kind of have a pride in, I mean, I used yeah. to, you have a pride in the fact that our ancestors were polygamous. Yeah, our ancestors were, yeah, they pulled the hand carts across the plains. They suffered beyond belief. And it's, yeah. it's really interesting to kind of look at it now and go, you know, the, although their faith was was pure because they were doing everything they can, but yeah. what they believed in might not have been that correct. Yeah, funny how that is. But you're active, I guess, as a young man in primary and Sunday oh, school. Yeah. And yep, went through Ronic everything. And priesthood and everything. And yeah, so I started going through. I had um, a lot of questions growing up. I had a lot of you about know, the concerns. church. Yeah, about that, about the oh. church itself. You talked to dad and mom and dad about it. Or? Yeah, I would. I would ask questions, and they would, you know, do their best to kindly answer. Um, one of the biggest ones was when I was about twelve or thirteen. Yeah, I was sitting in class, and someone said something about multiple gods, like who God was a god, who had a god, who had a god, who had a god, and I was sitting there, and I was going, <laughs> "What is this?" <laughs> <laughs> didn't, and, didn't, uh, didn't sound quite right. I no, guess. no, yeah. I just, I, it really scared me. Yeah. And so I went home and I just kind of sat there and I was twiddling my thumbs going, oh, okay, God, okay, <laughs> who, you, who are you and then what is this? And, and I kept thinking and going back, you know, okay, well, if God is God and he has a God, then who is God's, 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 and I went back like that. I felt like I was going through this black abyss trying to figure out, okay, well, where's the beginning? And yeah, who was the first guy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like. yeah. and I, I can distinctly remember this feeling of calm peace just coming over me and God saying, it's going to be okay. And looking back at it from, you know, years now and, and going, wow, it really is okay. <laughs> because I, he's, he's taken me from where I was to where I am now yeah. and secure in my faith in Jesus Christ. Wow. So it gave you the kind of the, a calm feeling to move forward and, and not, not be too disturbed by that concept, right. I guess. Right. Yeah. right, yeah, it gave me the opportunity to continue on my search for truth. That's yeah. interesting as a young, that young, that you would have such a deep question about things. And, but you went to seminary. I did. In fact, and you ended up being the seminary president, or what do they call <laughs> yeah, that? The, the seminary council president. Council. Yep, I was in and that's there. That's fairly uh, elite, or I mean, there's very few that get to do that. Oh, Only yeah. one each year, of course, and yep, one you have each to be year. recommended by what your bishop and stake bishop president. Bishop and the stake president, I think. Yeah. yeah, and so they recommended me, and I was made that. And mm -hmm. I didn't really know what I was doing. I just knew that I liked people, and I was just oh, okay. Here we go, guys. They're <laughs> gonna go down there and you know go talk to people. But yeah. you know, and I don't know. I it was it was an interesting experience yeah. for sure. Well, good. And then, any other questions come up during that? seminary time at all? Oh, or? there were so many questions. When we started, really? yeah, when we started studying, um, I would have different thoughts and different questions, and, and the specifics I can't really remember right now, but I would ask 
questions and they'd either give some kind of offhand remark or or, or something to kind of dismiss the question. Yeah. And I just kind of, oh, well, uh, okay. Yeah, you know, that's fine. Probably sorry they made you the president. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All these, they don't like questions, too many questions, No, do they? no, no, they don't. You know, it's, it's a bubble that we live in, for sure. Yeah. So uh, you end up, uh, after high school, what happens? I went on a mission. Went up to, um, where'd you go? I went to Billings, Montana. Okay. So, I, yeah, I went out there. It's a whole different country out there, and I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I served faithfully out there. I was, I've always been kind of wacky. Um, throughout my time, even growing up, I, I played the organ. I'm an organist. Oh. And so I played the organ for a Catholic church. And um, Now, this was actually before your mission, This right? was before the mission, yeah. I remember you saying something about playing at age 14 or 15 or yeah. 16 or something. Yeah, when I was about 14, I started playing the organ for my ward. And then about 15, 16, I started playing the organ for the Catholic church, um, just a local parish yeah. out by me. Oh. and grew to love it. I played Saturday and Sunday and um, Holy Week came around and it became Holy Terror Week for me because I was there every single day. <laughs> playing, the, playing the organ. Yeah, oh. playing the organ for them. And then I played, I substituted a Methodist and I'd been to a couple other places like that too. During those visits, did you sense a a gospel different than Mormonism or did you I did did you listen I mean were you able to listen to the messages and yeah yeah I did I listened really closely and intently yeah. throughout all the sermons um, I would listen as the the pastor would get up and he would talk about Jesus and every single um, every single Saturday or Sunday he was talking about Christ and would share stories directly out of the Bible and I remember just going, huh? yeah, isn't that an interesting concept? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so anyway, I, I really, really enjoyed that. And um, in fact, the pastor there, the father there, gave me a little rock um, with a cross in it one Christmas. And he knew that I was getting ready to go on my mission. Okay. And so um, he said, I want you to take this with you everywhere you go. Just keep it in your pocket because I want you to know that we love you and that we care about you and we're praying for you. And oh, so goodness. throughout that time, um, different members of the Catholic Church, I, I was writing to them throughout the entire time I was out there. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I, I stayed in, in close contact and touch with them. And then while I was out there in the mission too, I was given special permission to go to midnight mass. <laughs> oh, at and Christmas so mass. On, huh? Yeah, Christmas mass. And oh, so I didn't. I just said Christmas. Man, was it Christmas or Easter? Or it was yeah, Christmas Eve. Something. Okay. Christmas, Christmas Eve. Yeah. Eve. And so we went. Um, we went to that, and we took a couple members with us too. And it was incredible. The service was amazing. The organist was awesome. Hmm. Um, in fact, any of my other companions while I was out there, I would take them and we would go to other churches too because I, I believed in, in diversity and in, um, you know, e even though I didn't, because even while I was out there, I had a lot of doubts about the church. And I just kept thinking, am I doing the right thing? Am I being who I'm supposed to be? Am I sharing a gospel that I actually believe in? Now, as a missionary, you do share your testimony. What was that mm -hmm. testimony like? Did well, you say that you believed in the Book of Mormon and Jesus Smith and the current prophet and the current church and all that? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I was very bold in my testimony about that. I, I would go out there and, and I'd say, I believe in Jesus Christ. And I believe in the Book of Mormon. I believe in Joseph Smith. I'd get worked up enough before I got up there that the tears were getting ready to come out when I got up. And um, I challenged people to read the Book of Mormon all the time. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't really until I started reading the Bible that I was going, oh, well, some of my doubts are validated. You know, they were... They was were this on your mission too then? Mm -hmm. You started reading the Bible? Yeah, towards the end of the mission. Yeah. Um, I ended up going home 18, well, at 18 months, so six months early um, because of some health challenges that I was facing oh. out there. I had, I have pretty severe asthma and was in the hospital a lot. Oh. Um, and so, especially being in Montana, <laughs> Is it pretty where it was pretty, yeah, it was, of, it was pretty hard out there. Yeah. Um, but that's when my testimony really grew was, you know, in those different hospital trips. Of, of Mormon, te Mor Mormon testimony? No. Oh. No, of my God, of my, of, of, of God, and, of Jesus. And the Bible. And, and, and the Bible, yeah, because I would, I'd spend time um, just praying. 
when I couldn't breathe, I was, I was spending time praying most wow. of the time and just saying, God, please show me the way. God, please help me to, to find you. And um, anyway, yeah, so I, when I got home from the mission, I fell into a really, really deep depression. Uh, I because of coming home early, did, well, because of did coming family home early, judge you for that or no, friends or no, anybody? they were they were pretty loving and accepting they? of okay. that, yeah. Okay. Um, but when I got home and, and that depression hit, it was mostly because of the. I mean, it, coming home early was hard, but also the, um, you know, just the health issues, really. Yeah, and so. Anyway, I, there was times when I couldn't even get out of my bed, and my doubts haunted me. It was just horrendous. It's a rough time, huh? Yeah, I mean, I I would pray and beg God, please let, answer this question, or what's what's going on with this, and um, <laughs> even looking. It's amazing you'd have this kind of. Well, turmoil. yeah, because it was just. I mean, I was questioning everything. There was even a point where I said, "Okay, well, is there even a God?" Because, yeah. you know, I got to that point of, well, okay, well, is there really a God? And, and that was reaffirmed very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> you know, um, and so there was, anyway, so uh, weeks go by, months go by, and I get this temple preparation calling. And they said, well, you're back from your mission, so you need to, you need to have um, a calling, calling yeah. right? And so I got in there, and I it was like, oh. What am I going to teach these people? What am I? What am I supposed to be helping these people with? Because, of course, everything that's in there, you're not really supposed to say. Well, yeah, that's why I was kind of joking or saying at the very beginning, how much oh, can you yeah. really teach? Because uh, I mean, I know the I taught the curriculum, so I know what. Yeah, what it you get has, that single pamphlet, yeah. and you go through that, and yeah. well, you know, God's done this, and this is what this is, and everything in there, but none of that's correct. You, you look at King Solomon's temple, and you go back in through that time, and you look at it and you go, well, we weren't doing those things in the temple back then. They were Did you know, you know fulfilling that the stuff? law of Moses. Did you know that then, when you were teaching it? Um, a little bit, but not Did really. Yeah. I didn't fully understand. I mean, that's not anything Mormons talk about at all, right. is Solomon's temple in the sense of of what's what actually happened there and yeah, who could what go goes in. On. And, yeah, yeah, because we're taught that this is, you know, passed down through years and years and years and then restored right. through Joseph restored, Smith. Right. Well there was no need for it to be restored because <laughs> it's it's nothing but the Freemasons stuff, you know, their their symbols and, and yeah, whatnot. Right. And so it's all passed down and even I'd say stolen by Joseph Smith from the Freemasons. Yeah, I don't think they were happy about no. that either. <laughs> yeah, and then he started so. sharing it with women too, and I think that Yeah. Who knows what actually happened at Carthage, you know, who was involved right. there, but uh, well, interesting. So you start learning more and more, it yeah. sounds like so I, I started I Did started that help studying. with the depression? Um, to start studying and learning? Not, not really. really. I mean, it did a little bit. I mean, I, I found out that it was clinical and was going through a whole bunch of other challenges that were associated with that. Okay. Um, but in, as part of this process, I, I decided and was given the opportunity by my aunt and uncle, who I love very dearly, to move out to Oregon for a little bit, which oh. is, you know, we'd go out there quite often. Um, and I loved it out there. Yeah. I could breathe out there. The air was so clean. <laughs> well, it gets washed regularly up yeah. there, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, for sure. Yeah. And so I went out there, and my brother's now on his mission. And so I, I decided that after only about a month or two of being up there, or even maybe less than that, uh, my brother was going on his mission, so I was going to try to make it back to the farewell. Yeah. And um, well, let me back up just a little bit. Even while I was out there, I still had all these doubts and questions and was trying to get into the YSA ward and go, but I'd go to sacrament meeting and I'd hear stuff and go, uh, no, and then I'd go back home. Wow. You know, and so anyway, so coming from that part and still having these doubts, still having these questions, I then um, went back to go back to Utah. And as I got there, you know, I made it just in time. And I was wearing jeans, a shirt kind of like this. I was all scraggly. And um, they didn't have an organist. 
So I went up there and jumped on the organ dress like that, and I'm surprised I wasn't thrown out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have a dress standard there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you played, huh? I did, I played, and then the next day I was going to go back, because it was just a one-day thing. Yeah, yeah. And so as I was going back, I, my car broke down and died <laughs> in this little tiny town um, just, in, just past... Uh, Oh, I can't remember exactly where it was, but anyway, I... In I, Idaho or Utah? No, or? in Oregon. Yeah, oh, in I was Oregon. in Oregon. Okay. And um, anyway, my car died there, and so I was towed. And long story short, on that end, I ended up in this hotel for three or four days. And... Um, well, the car was being repaired, I guess. Well, yeah, the car's never been repaired oh, since. It's okay. God kind of... It was kind of like a Jonah experience for me. God just kind of... I, I tried to run away from my problems with the LDS Church. And God pulled me back and said, No, you got to pay attention. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's, that's how he did it, huh? Yeah, well, and then when I was, I, was sitting in, I was sitting in my hotel room and I was praying and just thinking, Oh, okay, God, I just... And I just bought this car, too, on top of all that. Oh, yeah. And so I started... I started praying and that's when I found that Bible. This Bible. I opened up the dressing drawer and there was this Bible by the Gideons, the Gideons that was left Bible, there. Yeah. And so I started studying and, and kind of reading and and um, I didn't you know, fully understand what was going on, but even in the first few pages it asks, you know, are you alone, depressed, addicted, stressed, cheated, experiencing conflict, and all these different scriptures in there. And so I just kind of started fiddling around and opening it and reading it. And, and it's not the King James Version, so I could understand it. <laughs> Isn't God fantastic? I mean, how he would uh, direct your yeah. life like that and have you get into that. So you started studying. And I did. And I, and I started reading. And when I, I ended up moving back to Utah shortly after that. Turn, you took I mean, the book with you. Yeah. And I took, <laughs> I called, I called the desk and I said, Hey, can I take this? And they go, Oh yeah, absolutely. And, Please. and so, yeah. And so I, I took this home with me. And when I started, when my dad caught me reading out of it, he goes, how come you're not reading out of like your quad or your King James version? Right. And, and I said, well, you know, the LDS Church is, does, it does not say that the King James Version is the only Bible. They've got a variety. If you go into the church distribution center, they got them from, you know, all over the place. Oh. Um, at least that's what I had thought at the time. Yeah. And so I started um, really studying and really reading out of it and was going, there's, there's something missing. There's something wrong. And um, I was still, at that time, I started playing the organ again for the Catholic Church and, okay. and was still out and stuff. And um, there was a day that I, I drove by this Lutheran church, St. Matthew's, here in uh, Salt Lake City in Taylorsville. And I just got this feeling that said, you need to go in. And so I, which, you know, it wasn't too unusual. I mean, I'd been pulling missionaries into other churches <laughs> throughout <laughs> that time. Yeah, they called me the Jay Golden Kimball of the mission because I've always loved coffee, even though I wasn't oh, supposed really? to have that. Oh, yeah. And so I'd go out there, and, well, elders, I think we should get together for coffee hour tonight, you know, and they just, Elder Hatch, you know. <laughs> but anyway, and so uh, um, I, I went into St. Matthew's, and it was as if I'd walked through the gates of heaven. Oh I mean, I just got in, and, and God's grace was just so overwhelming and so so strong that, I mean, I, I almost started to cry. I just was sitting there going, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. Wow. And this is where I'm supposed to be. And so I started listening and, and whatnot, and now I kind of go to a non-denominational church, Life Church. Oh, you do now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just from what I've learned and grown about, I mean, it's just incredible. Um, the journey the, that's taken. The messages that we hear, right? Yeah. These non-denominational, probably the Lutheran Church too, but mm -hmm. just about Jesus, right? Right. Always yeah. about Jesus Christ. Now, in my journey out of Mormonism, I my depression was out of control, but what didn't help was the persecution that I suffered. Um, yeah, tell us about that. that. You were telling me earlier about some friends and stuff. That you yeah, had. so... I had, I had 11 different people in my life, um, friends that I thought I was close to, tell me that I was not only going to hell, but that they did not want to be my friend anymore if I wasn't going to be LDS. And so they jumped ship, and I was sitting there going, oh, okay, well, I guess you really believe in what you believe, because that's not what it teaches you to do. 
you know, and very conditional love. Right? Yeah, yeah, very, very conditional love. And you know, my my mom and my dad, of course, were devastated, and and they suffered incredibly um, because of their doctrine, their teachings that they had. Mm -hmm. And in fact, my mom wrote a letter telling me that I wasn't going to be in the celestial kingdom with them anymore. And, you know, basically saying, well, I guess God has to give up some of his children, and I don't want to do that to mine, but if I have to, I will. And She really believes that. Yeah, huh? she really, really believes that. Mm -hmm. I, And according to them and according to their doctrine, yeah. I'm going to outer darkness. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Because you've had the light. Yeah, because I've had the light, and then I've, I've said, well, no, this isn't. You know this isn't true and so according to them I'm going to outer darkness yeah. and so she not only gave me this letter but she read it in front of my entire family to you. Um, mm -hmm. um, my grandparents on my mother's side started sending emails out to all of my aunts and uncles and to other people encouraging them to pray for me and uh, you know whatnot and my mom reached out to my local bishop and had him um, contact me for interview and so I went in for this interview, and he kind of shredded my guts <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> with all this stuff about the Book of Mormon and Doctrine and Covenants, and telling me that I need to be really careful because I might be going, I might be led away by Satan, you know, yeah. and, and everything. I mean, I, I experienced the extreme ugly side of the LDS Church. Did you feel alone? I did completely. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was it was really 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 bad. The only person that was really there for me was my now fiance, um, who was very encouraging and loving, and who was never LDS. Oh. She couldn't understand what was going on. <laughs> um, but even at my baptism, uh, while we were there, it was on uh, Easter vigil, and uh, it was just the uh, you know water on top of my head. I didn't want to be fully immersed because that was too. LDS okay. to me, yeah. And so, anyway, and so it was just this water on top of my head. But I invited all my family, and I was surprised that they came. Really, they did come. And um, anyway, well, after I was I was baptized, um, I felt this really good feeling for about half a second, and I turned around, and because something caught the corner of my eye. And my mom was just about on the ground, bawling her eyeballs out. And my dad was holding her up, and there was just this really big scene. And I was going, ah, uh, you know? <laughs> I mean, it was just horrendous. Oh, it was bad. just horrendous. And things have gotten a little bit better now. You know, I've been... I've been Still the elephant in the room, I'm yeah, sure. But, yeah, yeah. And, and I've, I've been asking questions, and I, you know, I, I try to help other people ask questions. In fact, I've kind of started my own ministry, um, reaching out to Mormons oh, and people of that faith. I, I send letters and, and cards out to different people and yeah. through the mail. So it's it's almost like spiritual warfare <laughs> through the postal service. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. You know, yeah. I mean, it's just really, really interesting. But Isn't it sad, though, that they when we listen to them talk and, and in talks and so on, we just have a sense that they just don't have, they don't have all the information. And worse, they're not willing to look at all the information right. or even be aware of it. Isn't that sad? That they it won't, is. They it's won't take really the time to really, they have these good feelings and that's what they're basing their, their whole thing on. Yeah, you had a couple of scriptures. Did you want to share? Yeah, before I we... did. There was... Um, there's one that I found, let's see if this one was it, um, right here in John, in the very first chapter of John, um, in verse 14 it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. That's become my journey out of all of this is, you know, I, I believe that the word that Jesus did become flesh. That well, God, that's in first, the first verse. Read that one. You've got yeah, that highlighted, too. Yeah, and in the very first verse, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God, and the Word was that's God. Um, and then came and dwelt yeah, among us. Yeah, and he came and dwelt among so us. So not our older brother. No. 
<laughs> no, no. I always thought that was kind of interesting. You Did know? you really? And and recently, I I've been sharing um, this quote that I found out of the Journal of Discourses in Volume Seven, page two hundred eighty nine. Let me write that down. I'll get it later. Yeah, where it, where it says in there, this is Brigham Young speaking to the people of the gen in general conference. He says that the only way to heaven is through Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith is the only, like, we have to have his certificate, we have to have his, his acceptance, blessing, yeah, his to acceptance. get into heaven. And I thought, you know, how blasphemous and really anti-Christian. Yeah. And I'd never, ever thought about that. And, and I mean, Matthew says, by your fruits ye shall know them, right. right? And if you look at his fruits, it's, they're not ripe, they're kind of rotten. <laughs> Well, there's so much you learn. And don't you know more about Mormonism now than you ever than did? Than I ever did before. Uh, yeah. Seminary time, mission time, notwithstanding. Yeah. We just learned so much about Joseph Smith's Especially as the temple prep instructor, too. You're thinking, well, yeah, I know all this stuff. Yeah. I'm going to get you guys ready to go into the temple. And then I'm going, oh, I didn't know anything. <laughs> no. And no. I couldn't share much either. No, and you can't really show that you're... Uh, questioning at all that's just not done yeah. so you say it's a little better with family now and it is it has become a little bit better with family yeah. now I've kind of started ministering to them slowly yeah. um, and and have hopes that one day that they'll be able to find the true Jesus of the Bible yeah. um, I've started reaching out to different friends and, and other people I've started my blog um, oh, a, a walk with Christ yeah and I've been is that the name of it then it's well the official the URL is you know www.joshuabhatch.blogspot.com Joshua B. Hatch mm -hmm. okay dot blogspot.com yeah. I don't think we ended up getting that on the screen but sorry about that no so. <laughs> that's fine that's fine and so I've started you know I've started ministering to other people and I I've been um, you know, sharing God's light, God's truth with other people, yeah. um, simply by just opening up the scriptures. You know, Isaiah forty three ten. There was no other gods formed before me; neither shall there be after me. And you know, all these other scriptures that are in there. That, I mean, Romans is incredible. Isn't when it Romans talks about and grace. Paul's letters are yeah. so fantastic. Yeah, Paul's letter to the Romans. Well, we're almost out of time, Josh, but. Isn't it joyful? Is the journey joyful, or can it you, is. in a few words, just say what this has meant to you? And the depression, I'm sure, is gone, and or I'm assuming it is. And it's manageable. Oh, yeah, good, it's good. it's a lot better. Um, the journey is joyful. Yeah, it doesn't feel like my it. My burden at is easy, or my yoke is easy. My burden is light, and that's right. Yeah, and that's, and it really is that because although it's although grace is not carefree. It is freeing, yeah. and I and mean that's and a what free it gift is. too. Yeah. yeah, and a free gift. And we never to all understood that as Mormons. Did. No, no, not ever. We thought it was by our works, and according to Second Nephi. Yeah, <laughs> and Jesus just makes up the little difference at the end, but yeah, just that little tiny bit. But it's they, he makes all the difference. Yeah. Well, what a great story, and you're such a young man, and I'm I'm grateful, and I'm glad that you're able to share this with others because I I. There's a real need, and I think there are people. I mean, you you had questions at your at different ages, and I think others have questions about the the church. They don't maybe verbalize them, but when if they can get exposed to those things or pick up a Gideon's Bible or right, something yeah. and start really reading what the Bible has to say and who Jesus is, so. Well, and that's the other incredible thing is that we have all the proof and all the evidence, thousands and thousands and thousands of manuscripts. If there was ever an error, we would find it and we would know because we have stuff to compare it to. You didn't know that either, is it? No, I had saying, no idea. No, I thought that just I eighth article of faith. Bible. Yeah, yeah, not translated correctly. Yeah. Well, Josh, thanks so much. Appreciate that. You're, Absolutely. You're a good kid. Thank you, girl. And thanks for joining us on the Ex Mormon Files. See you later.